we are on a trail again. Uh, the reason why uh, we do it is unwanted calories from the Christmas and New Year parties. And also we are going to go to Batur. So I need to lead a, need to a little bit uh, train. We decided that we have to do like a kind of maximum. Ivan is leaving soon, so his departure is on 19th of January. So we would like to see also, show, we would like to show him Batur as well, Mount Batur, which is kind of half of effort if we compare to Agung, so why not? And what's also interesting. Uh, Laura is going to join us and that's the thing I'm really happy about otherwise she's just recommending people the battle but she never been there so that's that's why we're going all of us As you see, the trail is the same, but looks differently <laughs> just because of the rains. It's more green now. The first time I did this trail last, last year, it was 29th of, that was 29th of April. So I, that, that was the time when I discovered this trail. And that, that was the time when I started hiking regularly. Like that time I did almost every day. In many aspects you can compare mountains with the free diving. Same as in a free diving, if you go to the mountains, you always have to keep in mind that you have to get back. Just it's like mirroring, opposite, whatever you call it. Like if you do free diving, when you go down, you always have to remember that the same distance you have to come back to the surface while in uh, mountaineering, if you go up, it's only the half of the way. So you, you have to get back, right? Like, for example, scuba diving, that's, that's more I can compare with uh, driving a car. You fill up the tank with a... Uh, uh, petrol or you charge your battery if it's electric car and then you go from the point A to the B so when you're driving you always have to keep in mind that you have to reach with that charge or tank you have to you have to reach the point B diving is the same just you have instead of petrol you have you have air reserve kind of thought again it came into my mind because I always hear this story from Agung hiking when people go up and they are kind of happy they're taking all these photos and then they forget that they have to go down and that's the biggest struggle for everyone because it's it's really hard to come down it's always easier to go up usual distance done feeling good so in a video from Kuta Beach from December 31st and I don't think I have something big has changed in that place I'm walking at the moment one riverbed I've been walking this place as previously uh, as well so that's why I came here just to check out what's going on here so so I'm walking and you just look around so that's how it looks like 
Right, so on both sides, like in this place, when there is a no rain, so then the the like uh, locals are just dumping all the plastic. That's how it looks like. And this one looks it looks pretty okay at the moment, just because it's been a rain, right? So all everything already fluted a little bit up. So I will just follow this riverbed and then you will see that it's getting closer and closer to the ocean. And like for example, this is a fresh dump, for example. This is a leftover from the previous flow. So that this is only sink what is left. The rest is already somewhere there. I understand I'm probably not the right person to talk about this problem. There are people who understand about this problem a way more and and as a time I will ask them these questions, but that's what I see. And then all this plastic is going into the sea. And then sometimes people go for the diving, they're coming up and then this, this spill of the plastic is on a surface. All this plastic is not coming from Java or whatever, as uh, sometimes people say, it's actually coming from the mountains. Because the problem they the mountain people actually have this problem with uh, where to put all this trash because no one is collecting them you cannot really burn it because it's burning really toxic and creating toxic smoke so they are kind of what so I think we actually I'm feeling like a kind of, we should feel responsible because we gave the plastic but we didn't give us solutions what to do with it so they're just to blame the people in the mountain is also not really correct. But I don't want to be the janitor that's picking up all this trash on the beach while someone is just simply dumping it. I think it should be some, there should be some government program which is, which is giving some solutions for this problem. And that's the thing. And then finally we're going to the we go into the Manta point and then we see this. And it's so bad to see these mantas, poor mantas, swimming between this trash. And, and especially we know that actually they're eating, they're actually filtrating the water through the gills and that's how they're eating right so they have to filtrate and also whale sharks they have to filtrate so much water through the gills and it's where it gets all this trash it's getting in their stomachs and that's finally we are all oh, we lost another manta or another whale shark just because of this stuff uh kind of the thing for today i would like i would i would be actually just happy to participate in some programs but only if I see some result, just to pick up the trash, put it in into the bags, the finally way it all this trash is going, it goes nowhere. There should be some recycling programs. I know a lot of people trying to create some uh, jewelry from the trash, for, from used uh, plastic and that stuff, but it's just like, I don't know, it's like a drop into the ocean. Yeah, so it's like a creating illusions that we are doing something well, nothing really happens. Okay, thank you very much for watching today. See you tomorrow. Bye.